Greetings, fellow makers. Welcome down to the shop. I'm Brittany Duran from Punished Props. I'm going to show you how I 3D modeled, printed, assembled, and painted this helmet. This is Commander Holly Conrad's helmet from her adorable Avatar character. If you're not familiar with Commander Holly, make sure to check out her website. She loves video games, cosplay, birds, especially burbs, and making awesome art. We had a chat with Holly this summer about potentially fabricating her character's helmet someday. What she didn't know is that we went home and started building it. We showed her the finished pictures yesterday and she's pretty excited. This is a prop 3D video, so I'm gonna go straight into how I modeled and printed this helmet. For this project, I finally got to learn the basics of the 3D modeling program Fusion 360. Autodesk Design Academy released a great modeling tutorial for a basic helmet design. I highly recommend following along with that video series to learn the basics of sculpting in Fusion 360. Something neat I got to use in this build is a 3D body scan I got when I was at Rose City Comic Con. Once scaled correctly, I can build armor on my form and have it print at the correct size. In sculpt mode, I imported a background canvas that has a general helmet reference and scaled the image to my head size. Under Create, Quad Ball is a great base for a helmet. After scaling the sphere, Edit Form lets you move vertices around to match the reference. Turning on Symmetry will make sure both sides look the same. It's one of the things I love about 3D modeling. I got the shape as close as I could before I started inserting edges. Then, I kept moving the points around, making sure the helmet fit around my head reference. In this sculpt mode, you can select faces and delete them. Make sure you're happy with the shape before finishing the form and returning to model mode. For the ear pucks, I created a circle sketch, extruded it to create a body, and added a fillet to the edge. Extruding into a body removes material, and you can add sketches right onto a body to extrude more details. I went back to sculpt mode to create the ear wingalings. Adjusted the vertices and checked the placement on the helmet. The bottom got chopped off the finalized wing. I added a five millimeter thickness to the helmet and figured out how to use the split body tool by creating a sketch to slice off parts. I duplicated the ear pucks to use them to cut a hole into the helmet since I wanted to print the pucks separately. Back in sculpt mode, I used another quad ball to form the visor. This visor is going to be printed as a vacuform buck, so I can use clear plastic as the final visor. Also, play around in render mode to change the appearance of your model. Since I only know how to use a few tools in this program, I relied on sketches and split body to add the helmet details. I figured out how to add an angled sketch by building the sketch on a rotated cubes plane. Offset can be used to create a bigger or smaller sketch shape. The helmet body is now split into pieces, so I added a fillet to all the edges, creating a V-shaped trench for the details. This seemed like a good match for the triangular needle file I'll be using to clean up the print. Another sketch and split body tool were used for the H symbol with added fillets and all the helmet bodies were combined back together. I used a copy of the wing to cut a hole in the ear puck and used the same method for the puck to slot into the helmet. This helmet is too big for my print bed, so I used split bodies to cut it into pieces that will print with little to no support material. I duplicated the visor and scaled it flat to create a loft for the visor buck. Both of our printers were utilized for this build, the Dremel Idea Builder and the Ultimaker 2, with a slicing program Simplify 3D and PLA filament. Printing vertically greatly reduced the print times. Some of the pieces are flipped upside down, so there's no overhangs where the ear pucks will attach. Meanwhile, the visor printed with support material on the inside. The model is only three millimeters thick, but it printed really well. And the visor fits perfectly on top of the book. 
I was worried about printing the wings vertically since they're so thin. I'll just have to clean off the supports later. The wing sockets are cleaned out with sandpaper. These are going to be finished separately and glued together after painting. I started taping the helmet pieces together to check the fit and order of assembly. Also checking the visor size. Oops. These ear pucks need to be socketed into one layer of the helmet at a time. There are several steps in the 3D modeling and printing process where I probably made mistakes. So test fitting everything is super important. It's much easier to clean up the ear pucks since they're printed separate from the helmet. I used Evercoat's body filler to plug up some holes and super glue mixed with baby powder for the smaller imperfections. Then more sanding. I trimmed some nails to make joining pegs for the helmet pieces. These were super glued into place. The earpiece got glued to the helmet before adding a second layer. These metal pegs were all right, but I don't think I'd use this method again. Misaligning the attachments a little bit results in a lot of body filler cleanup later. The first round of sanding is done with a palm sander to smooth out all the print lines. And needle files clean out the trench details. Onto the body filler to hide all the seams. I still had way more cleanup, but I sprayed the helmet with some filler primer to help me see uneven areas and also fill in more print lines. I cut off some bolts to use for sturdy wing attachments. This was also a convenient way to hold the wings for spraying primer. To make the helmet extra sturdy, I mixed up a two-part epoxy resin, brushed it into the helmet, and laid in some fiberglass mats making sure the epoxy soaked through the fiberglass. After that cured, I mixed up a different kind of epoxy that can be laid on much thicker. This covered any jagged or lumpy fiberglass bits. And back to sanding. I switched to a different color of filler primer to help me find all the low spots that needed to be filled. Holes are drilled for the wing bolts for a final test fit. I went through another round of body filler and then moved on to a finer sanding sponge. Then I used normal white primer as a base color for all the pieces. While that was drying, I tackled the visor, which got attached together and adhered to a chunk of scrap plastic. XTC 3D is a great epoxy mixture for smoothing out prints. I didn't use this on my helmet since the epoxy would fill in all the trench details. I worked my way up in sandpaper grits and eventually wet sanded the visor area. We've tried vacuum forming straight on 3D printed bucks before and the heat of the plastic warps the prints. So I wanted to mold this in a sturdier material. For this mold, I used alginate, which is a one-time use mold mixed straight into water. After 30 minutes, my alginate was cured and I removed my mold from the jacket. In the past, we've used a plaster called Hydrocal, which works great for vacuum forming. All I had laying around was an old container of Plaster of Paris, which I hadn't worked with before. What could go wrong? Alginate starts to leak water, but I still let the mold sit overnight, then pulled out a pretty decent casting I did have to wait a whole week for the plaster to fully dry out. For the visor, we used PETG plastic with one side of the protective covering peeled off. This larger oven and vacuform setup are borrowed from our buddy Eric at Corgi Creations. It took a couple of tries. We got the plastic way too hot in the oven on one of them, but we finally got a successful pull. My buck design wasn't the best. It was pretty hard to free the visor. So Bill just cut the plastic free. And then this happened. Oh, the buck is destroyed. So the 
let's hope it worked. Turns out if you overheat plaster of Paris, which we did on some of the previous vacuform poles, the plaster will start to turn back into dust. I should have used HydroCal. Fortunately, the protective layer peeled away the plaster bits. I finished trimming away the edges and test fit the visor. It's not perfect, but it's all we have. You can dye PETG plastic with polyester fabric dyes. Again, we have a more detailed video on this process linked below. A large pot of water is heated to 140 degrees and I mixed in two packs of iDye Poly Turquoise. The visor is attached to a wire hanger and dunked into the pot for five minutes. Then washed off in a bucket of cold water. This process can be repeated until the desired tint is reached. I needed a very light blue tint, so I only dunked the visor twice. Any remaining dye chunks can be buffed away with plastic polish. I think the visor turned out all right. I added some shimmery awesomeness to the helmet with pearlescent acrylic paints airbrushed on all of the surfaces. The detail strips are masked off with painter's tape. The areas getting blue paint are carefully trimmed apart with a sharp X-Acto knife, then peeled away. Everything else got covered with tape. I mixed up the darker blue used on the helmet strips and outer earrings. Two layers of blue were airbrushed on, then let dry before removing the tape. I used cardboard as a mask for the lighter blue ear parts. And the same color is applied to the wing pieces. I picked up a can of Spray Max to try as a protective glossy coating. This is a catalyzed, scratch-resistant layer used on vehicles. Shake the can for two minutes, then pop the activator cap on the bottom of the can. Then shake for two more minutes or longer just to be safe. I mist it on a light layer over all the surfaces. I waited 10 minutes, then I applied a second heavy layer. This stuff is pretty awesome. The clear coat cured in a few hours and it feels like a protective layer of plastic. My only regret is the cat hair is stuck in the finish, but that means it's an authentic Punish Props piece. Onto the home stretch, I removed the paint in the ear sockets and test fit the wings. Five minute epoxy is mixed up to permanently attach the wings. I like to use chunks of upholstery foam for helmet supports. Attaching them with hot glue is a sturdy bond that can be torn away if the foam needs to be adjusted. We are trying out some 3M VHB tape for the inner visor attachment. The helmet surface is sanded and cleaned. One side of the tape is peeled away and applied to the helmet rim. The visor edge got roughed up and tacked in place. A strip of gray craft foam is hot glued over the visor edge, completing the sandwich. And that's the whole build. This was a fun and challenging project where I got to learn Fusion 360 and try out a bunch of materials and techniques that are new to me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the build and the finished helmet. We're shipping this off to Holly soon, so it's gonna go to a good home. We have more detailed videos on some of the techniques used in this build that I'll link down below. And we've got tons of cool projects going on. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. Also, check out Commander Holly's channel to see cool video game playthroughs and other shenanigans. Now go out there and 3D model something. Do it right now. I'll wait right here. See you later.